This is a little tutorial on how to mask a face or a head or something inside a shape in Premiere Pro. So as you can see here, I have got a big circle that is it, we've got green in the middle. And on the left side here, I've got Man City outer, Man United outer. So if we hide the Man City one, you'll see it's the Man United one. Now, to do this, what we need to do is at first, we need to make a timeline and then make a shape. So to do that, press Command and New and make your timeline. Now, the circle doesn't need to be 19, 20, 10, 80 because the circle is going to be a smaller part of the screen. So for that reason, I'm going to make this 1080 by 1080. And as you'll see, I've now got a nice square template or whatever it's called. Brains switched off. Right, so now go to graphics and titles, go to new layer. And then if you want a rectangle or a circle or polygon or whatever, then that's what we need to use. So for this example, I'm going to use a circle. So as you can see, we've got a circle. Now that circle isn't very circular. So we're going to get rid of it and we're going to do a different way. Now on my other screen here, which you won't be able to see. So just bear with me while I bring my other screen in. On here, you will see this bar here, which is your toolbar. You want to go down to the, 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 the box here and click and hold to find either rectangle, ellipse or polygon. For this example, we're going to use the ellipse tool. I'm just going to resize my screens again. So then what we need to do, now we've selected that on your program monitor, press shift, click and drag, and you will see a perfect circle will appear. As long as you don't let go of shift, it will, it will retain its shape. So let go of the click before you let go of the shift. Right, now you've got a perfect circle. Now again, on the right hand side of the screen, so I will just move this across. You need to go into Essential Graphics, click on Edit, click on Shape, and then just centralize it, and you will see that it's nice and central from here. Okay, so the next part of this is how do you get your footage inside that circle? So, very simple, but something you may have never done before, and something that I, up until this point, had never done before. So just bear with me while I resize my screen again. Okay, so we've got your circle here, that's your timeline. So you need to make it as long as it needs to be. Right, what we then need to do is bring some footage in. So on my other screen that you can't see at the minute, I'm just going to bring in a video. So there's a video now brought into my timeline. I'm not going to drag that video onto my timeline. Okay, so what you'll see now is that circle is there and the video is behind the circle. Now that's no good because I can't get that circle in there. What you need to do though, something different, very, very easy. Bring this, bring this screen in. So on your timeline here, you've got an actual box here where you can build content. It's a relatively new feature in Premiere Pro and a couple of years old or something, but something that a lot of editors I know don't use. So to get this footage, what we need to do is we need to go back to our program monitor, our uh, media bin, sorry. So let's just get that there. Can you see that there? And we need to click on our circle. So then the shape one comes up here. And then we need to drag the footage, not onto our timeline, but into our essential graphics bin. And then you'll see that that will, in a second, appear within that circle. So once you're in here, you need to make sure you click on your shape and you need to click mask with shape and three, two, one, voila. Now, obviously that footage is there on the timeline. So we have now got a perfect mask over our footage. Now, the only downside to this is it doesn't bring the audio with it. It only brings the um, video. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna see if we can drag the audio only into here, which I'm not certain whether that's worked, but we shall see. No, it hasn't. So the way to get the audio in is simply by matching the position on the timeline with the actual video and obviously turn the video off or just drag the audio in. So from this monitor here, just drag the audio in and then you can get rid of that completely. And now you've got... Maybe 
back, so those will... So you've now got video and audio. Now, you may go, well, hang on, I'm going to start editing that. And the problem you've got, if you start cutting this and then cutting the audio, you'll notice that it will go out of sync. Now you go, well, hang on a minute, all I've done is trimmed it. The reason being is every time you trim that circle, it sends the, the start of the footage to the point where you've cut it. So watch his face. So what you need to do now is once you've got your audio and your video in sync and you're happy with this circle, you need to highlight them both and make a nest. Or you can probably group it, to be fair. Let's see what happens when we group it. No, so grouping it doesn't work. So you need to make a nest. So you right click, go down to wherever nest is. Can you see nest? There it is, nest sequence. Or you can, you might even be able to make it subsequence, but I know that nesting it will work. So you nest the sequence, and then now that, if you cut it, it will cut and it will stay in sync. Or the Isaac Hansen Aaron. Perfect. What you've got to do now, if you want to edit the, fr the, the frame in, so if you want to move him, you've got to double click it. Then you've got to click on graphic. Then you've got to go into the essential graphics edit panel. Ah, oh, it's because it's grouped. You need to ungroup it. There we go. Right. Now we can get rid of that. And then what we need to do is just use these keyframe, uh, not keyframe, sorry, um, X and Y axes and just move it so it's central. Now the box here will show you where the edges of the box are. So if you bring it down, you'll lose the edge. So just make sure that you don't lose the edge there. And you'll see that he is now nice and central there or thereabouts. I mean, he moves around, so it's never going to be perfect. But now, for example, so you've done that and you want to make that into, put that onto a different timeline. So, for example, let's go on to this video here. And you go, well, I want I want to put that, that circle in there. So that is now a timeline within your, within your, uh, within your screen. So you should be able to see it at the bottom center of my screen there as it's ghosting on the screen but to be absolutely certain i will move that in here there so there you go nested sequence so you want to you want to change that to circle mass <coughs> excuse me now click and drag the circle mass you'll see it's got audio which is exactly what we want now you can bring that audio in and that circle mass will now be on our timeline nice and big because it's a 1080 by 1080 video, but we have only got a 608 by 1080 screen, which is why it appears so big. So what we need to do now is just reduce its scale and place it wherever you want it to be on screen. So now when you play, you've got a nice, perfect circle with any footage you want within it. Now you can build that footage to be whatever you want. You can move it around. You might go, well, hang on. I want to put a border around that. So we're doing Man United stuff here. I want a, a red border. Perfect. So let's do that. So we go back onto our nest with our circle mask. What we want to do is we want to repeat the process that we did in the first place without the mask. So we want to create a new layer, which if we do what we did before and just go onto this, and create a circle. And then all we've got to do is click off this timeline so we don't make a circle on the existing one make ourselves a nice new circle, drag that out to fit the timeline, and then, hey presto, there it is. All we've got to do now is just tidy up the position. So if we go onto here, and then sort it all out, there we go, nice and easy. And then if we go onto effect controls, and we can make that circle bigger or smaller, depending on how tight you want it to be around your subject. So now, as you'll see, when we go back into our TikTok, there we go, he's got a nice red circle around his head. And if you want to change that to a different color, very simple, click on the shape, click on the color, and then choose your, use your color picker, and you can change it to whatever you want, whether it's Man City or Man United or Liverpool or Arsenal, whatever. And then now you will have a nice circle that you can use to edit with. Hope that's been of some use, and I will catch you in a bit.